This is Bumper to Bumper Radio, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle, Bumper to Bumper, helping you and your car feel better. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everybody, to a great Saturday. Saturday's always great. You never have a bad one. Welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Dave Riccio. He is Matt Allen, and we are here to help you with your car every Saturday from 11 to noon right here on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we're helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car repair experience. If you've got questions, we've got answers, so we encourage you to give us a call at 602 277-5827, 602-277-KTR. And for those of you who are texting but not driving, you can get a hold of us at 411-923. Send us your questions there. Today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, open phones as always. Do you live and die by internet reviews? And uh, our attorney general is doing some more good work in the auto repair business. Fill us in, Matt. Doing some good work for sure. You know, when Tom Horn came into office or was campaigning, I don't know, a couple of years ago, one of his uh, deals was going after protecting consumers and and maybe going after it. I think auto repair shops were one of his, I don't want to say targets because I don't know that it's a target. Sometimes it's an easy target. Right. And uh, they did another sting. We got a uh, press release on Wednesday. Uh you know, kind of summarizing, basically, uh, 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 Fletcher's Tire and Auto Service in Gilbert was found to have cheated an undercover, quote, uh, consumer who was a, a uh, attorney or agent, secret agent <laughs> with the uh, with these uh, attorney general's office. And what they do is they rig up a car and they take it into a repair shop and, and let you uh, have at it with them. See what happens. See, see what they see. What they recommend you. See what's sold. All that stuff. And in this case, it looks. Now we don't have mu- enough information, but in this case, it looks like there was something wrong with an air conditioner, or alleged to be wrong, and they got sold. The customer did a nine hundred dollar bill of goods, which was work that was unnecessary on the car. So what I'm envisioning here is is maybe someone drove in with an air conditioner not working, and and all it really was was a blown fuse. Uh, but they, you know, they had a manager tell them that the uh, that there was an internal seal and the compression was bad, and and that needed to be replaced for nine hundred dollars, even though no diagnostic test was performed that would show a leaking seal. Uh, you know, it's I, not that this is in, but I guess that's that free diagnosis that you get, right? Right, you right. Get, get what you pay for. <laughs> yeah, lift the hood. Yep, need an AC compressor. <laughs> <laughs> well. But I'd like to know more. I want to. We're going to try and get a hold of them and find out what really happened here. How was that presented? There's a lot more to these stories, and these didn't just, you know, they didn't just get this car and say, "Hmm, let's go check out this Fletcher's today." I mean, there had to be a pattern. Oh yeah, this was back up in to this. this was back in March too. There's a lot of follow up before before it even comes down to we hear about it. So it wouldn't be a wouldn't be an undercover sting if we knew about it early. <laughs> right, and that's I think it cost them twenty eight twenty eight grand. But my point there, Dave, was. And it wasn't just one complaint. I mean, people complain, and, and uh, maybe they don't know who to complain to. But this just wasn't this random complaint. This, this, I imagine that this comes after a pattern of well, there's there's of the same story. There's 900 just general repair shops in the valley, so are they, they can't do a sting on all 900 of them. But they're looking for patterns. So they get the attorney general's office gets complaints on a regular basis about all kinds of businesses, but when they see the same one over and over and over again about the same particular business, then it's like, hmm, it's a good place to start right here. Right. Yeah, and I mean, this particular location had 63 Better Business Bureau complaints in the last uh, 36 months or or three years, not this particular location, but company-wide. Well, that brings me to reviews, (laughs) because I was just looking, the BBB has a lot of bad reviews on it online. Did you see that? The, no, what? No, the BBB itself. As oh, far as yeah, reviews. yeah. We looked up the BBB. <laughs> They've got a, a score of two on Google. Uh, the, the, I mean, the, uh, well, I can't even think of this. But, yeah, the, the people who are, are supposed to be the consumer, I don't even know what, but they have bad reviews. Now, I didn't read them, Dave, but it'd be <laughs> well, interesting. I'm, I'm going to have to look into them, but... I'm reading this review, and this is a shop that I know very, very well, probably one of the most honest shops out there. 
Uh, they bend over backwards for their customer, and this review reads, Attention, do not trust this place. My mother was a senior citizen, was taken advantage of at this place. January 2012, they replaced her water pump and told her it was leaking. Installed a new one with warranty for 12 months. February 13, 2013, they again told her it was leaking and installed another one. Of course they did, as the warranty was expired. And why not suck more money out of a senior citizen? These people are a cricket praying elderly population. Really, a new water pump every year and every five to 6,000 miles? I don't think so. Stay away from this place. What do you think of that review? Well, as, as knowing who the review is written about, I know it's crazy. But then you start to break down these reviews. And people go into a, maybe a personal attack. And they bring, I mean, Dave, we see this in the Better Business Bureau when we arbitrate uh, cases. They bring in stuff that doesn't matter. Oh, it's a senior citizen. Nah, that, that's an emotion for you. This, that probably has nothing to do with anything. You know, they, uh, it, it's, well, the reality, they don't know what to complain about, but we know the reality behind this complaint is it's not even, this is second and she's writing a review about an experience that her mother had. <laughs> <laughs> and she doesn't even know what she's talking about. And, and she didn't pay for a water pump twice. They covered it out of warranty with no questions asked. They charged her for another service that she needed, but somehow the daughter thought that her mother was taken advantage of. And, you know, I, I can appreciate that, that you would want to ma- look out for your mother or your brother or whoever it may be. But as you guys as consumers are reading up on auto repair shops, you got to understand that uh, sometimes these things are gamed. So you'll see a shop that has all these great reviews, and you go have a different experience there that you didn't expect based off the reviews. Well, I was going to write Matt a bad review this morning, but I (laughs) didn't have the heart to do it just just to prove that anyone can write anything on the Internet. So do you trust them? And if you are going to use reviews for picking an auto repair shop, it should only be one piece of your decision-making process. Well, and it can certainly be a filter. Maybe you're down to to the wire and you're ready to choose. And you want to just see, get some information to go in there. But if you look at some of the bad reviews, I've got good ones. I've got bad ones. I've got some right down the middle. You go look at some of the bad ones. Half of those people, I would say, now I'm just making up statistics, but (laughs) there's a portion of those people that never even spent a dime at the shop. They're mad because we didn't give them a price over the telephone or they're, they're, they're mad for some other reason or because the, their perception of what we wanted to do and how we wanted to handle that relationship is uh boy it got skewed you're slow this morning i know <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying to trying to think it's an important topic i get i get online uh, and i do write matt a bad review every now and then <laughs> <laughs> horrible service the bald guy at the front <laughs> the bald yeah he's bad news watch out for the bald guys <laughs> but uh you know and, and then you get people that just vent and what i wish people would do i would say the overwhelming majority if not almost all of them and and whether it's me or any other shop, I'd be willing to bet that the customer or the reviewer never went to a manager or to an owner and said, hey, I've got a problem. Here's what happened. What do we do to fix this? They're, maybe they're antisocial. They don't have skills to have a conversation. They just go to the computer because they can. at some point they can be a bit anonymous, although we can usually figure out who it is. Right. But ha- let us help you have a better experience and fix the problem before we, I mean, we want well, reviews. How do you use reviews? Do you re- use reviews when you go to restaurants? I mean, because restaurants are different than auto repair, but you know, do you, I mean, I look at restaurants, oh, they got a four star or whatever. Sometimes. You uh, know, I'll go, I'll go there a four star. If I see a one star, you know, and it's like, I don't know. Sometimes I, you want to read the one star just to see how crazy the person is that wrote it. Cause you can really get it, <laughs> get a peek into the mind of some wacko that wrote this one star and just, went ballistic but at the other hand dave the, the, you know you see the stacked five stars right mm. i mean maybe you see one from the person who hasn't written a bunch of reviews does that i would just weight? say i would just say read deeper if you're going to re- use reviews as a tool for picking an auto shop read deeper you know sometimes on uh, i'll use yelp for instance you know i have good reviews on yelp but they got filtered out so i got one good one and bad one bad one so you got to read deeper but on your iphone all it's going to pop up with is the last kind of review and the you know, two stars or whatever it is, but uh, go deeper. You can't 
and not just one of them because, you know, Yelp has one way of filtering of views. I don't think Google filters as much. It, it doesn't seem like they do. You know, Google's always changing that algorithm, and it's got Google Plus, and whether you're on Google Plus, and, and, and it's hard to say. But you know what I like, Dave, too, is look at the response from the owner on some of the reviews. Did they tell the person to go pound sand? And maybe that's a good thing because they did. Because there's some customers, Dave, we fire them too. Sometimes you you don't qualify to be a customer of mine at times. And, uh, you know, so how, how was the response from the shop? Well, we've got wide open lines at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. You can also text us at 411-923. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, here along with Matt Allen, and we're here every Saturday from 11 to noon helping you with your car. If you've got car questions, give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. You can also text us at 411-923. And uh, we're talking about how to find good auto repair shops and reviews and attorney general stings on uh, dirty auto shops. And uh, I did want to tell you, one of the great places you can find an auto repair shop is BumperToBumperRadio.com. There are a bunch of independently owned shops where the owner's in the shop every day, and they've been established for a number of years, and credible shops, good shops you can trust and rely on. One of the newest shops that we've added to Bumper to Bumper Radio is New Image Paint and Body, which is in Tempe. That's John Fox and Chris Bozar. And uh, New Image has been around for decades. And the thing I like about them, as all the body shops on Bumper to Bumper Radio, is they're not in the pocket of the insurance company. So if you take your car there, they're going to fix your car best for you, not best for the insurance company. And that's a big deal. When you get your car wrecked and, and your buddy down at the insurance company says, oh, go to these guys, these guys are great, well... Are they? Are they great? Or, you know, you want to go to a body shop that's not necessarily in the back pocket of, of the insurance company. And they're what I call direct repair facilities. And just because a shop is a direct repair facility doesn't mean they're a bad shop. What I'm saying is that there can be a conflict when the guy you're getting business from wants you to repair something and use a used part or this piece or that piece. And, and, and the body shop really wants to do what's right for you. So Yeah, well, the insurance companies are arrogant. They figure they control the purse strings. And uh, so they say, whoever body shop, no, we don't pay for that kind of stuff. Mm. Well, they want to put a, put a used part in there when they should be putting a new part in there. Or, or clamps or stickers or shop supplies that hold the hood prop rod or little things like that. I think sometimes they get expected to uh, to uh, discover. They're just part, you know, that's just an ancillary item that's just part of the deal. Well, if you're on Bumper to Bumper Radio, check out New Image Paint and Body. And, uh, you know, Michael Henry, uh, who's who works with us on Bumper to Bumper Radio, he took his car there like 20 years ago, his Dodge Intrepid. Remember that car? <laughs> Dodge <laughs> the Intrepid. The Dodge yes. Intrepid. And he, you know, and he remembers just the whole, you know, atmosphere of them, them really making sure his car was fixed and fixed right and not based off what the insurance company said. So when you guys know, when you're talking to your insurance company and your car's in repair, they have a list of recommended shops or shops in your area, that type of thing. Those are shops that have signed up and agreed to their kind of their terms and conditions, mm -hmm. if you will, and that's how they're listed. It's not because they have any sort of great relationship with them. Uh, they, you know, they, they, it's they just business. They could be here today and gone tomorrow. The next guy comes in and, and sometimes does it a bit cheaper. They can, the insurance company will just sometimes move that relationship right over. Right. Well, the other thing, uh, general repair shops, people, you know, I find that I find a lot of negativity about their mechanics out there. Like, oh, this guy charged me all this money and this guy charged me all that money and I didn't need any of it. And, uh, you know, when we talk about the, you know, I'm glad that the attorney general is doing what he's doing because there is some bad seeds in our business, you know, hands down, there is. But they're a small percentage as opposed to the good people doing good repair work who are proud of their jobs and are going to take care of you. So as a whole, the auto repair industry, I think we have a little more problem with being inept versus... Uh, well, that's one thing that you say is I think there's more uh, ripoff, if you will, through incompetence or inability than there is through straight dishonesty. 
Well, right? so, I mean, yeah, no, I would, you know, just flat out bold dishonesty uh, or fraud. You know, the thing I would like to see, because this, this, in this particular instance, Fletcher's was hit with the, was hit with the suit and they paid the bill. But if it's, if it's fraud, at some point, why wouldn't the, why wouldn't the actual technician be responsible? You know, if, if you're robbing a bank and I'm driving the car, I'm an accomplice, right? The technician would have to know something's going wrong. Why is, you know, I believe, you know, Fletcher should be part of the deal, but I also believe the technician has got to has got to have some take ownership. Two to tango, right? Yeah, I absolutely. Mean, I mean, do you see this? I mean, these other types of shops that have had these things are both either the multi-store location or chain franchise, and then there's transmission warehouses and big, big places. Uh, then that aren't necessary multi stores. They're just huge uh, production type warehouse, internet shipping, and that type of deal. But you're right, Dave. Two people. So is is this the culture of that type of retail auto repair uh, coupon driven? Could be a tire little when, store. When you have multiple locations, they, they could have really good locations and they can have some really bad locations. You get a bad manager and a bad shop with a bad technician, and the two just do bad work and take advantage. So uh, you can't you can't throw them all under the bus, but what what I'm saying is there's some good ones and there's some bad ones and you really got to know the people that are working there. But I like to debate this with other guys in my business is that, you know, you just went to massage this morning. I'm pretty sure that the therapist was licensed. Was she not? Yes. I got a haircut on Wednesday and my barber was was licensed. There's a license pretty much a food food handler's license. Anything related to safety, there's a license that goes on, and it's it's not necessarily for the business. So the business does have a license, but it's for the actual individual practicing the work. So why do auto mechanics not have that? I you know I don't know, and I don't know that there's a whole lot of states that do have shop licensing. Maybe maybe there is some. I mean I know there's been there's been talk about shop licensing, but not necessarily technicians that I'm aware of, but the last thing I want is more government in my life. I mean, that's a, yeah, that's under, a whole other conversation. I, under, I understand but, that, but, but, but why are you okay with your massage therapist being licensed? You know she's been to school. You know she's, you know, I mean, there's something to be said about that. And I don't think you need to put more burden on the shops necessarily, you know, but on the technician, sure, he should have the- a license that he's proud of, and he should have a license that can be dinged if he's mischievous or... Well, anything fraudulent. I, I lived in Virginia, Northern Virginia. And in Virginia, we have state safety inspections. I wish we had them here on cars. But the deal with that was, and the way they keep you honest, as a state safety inspector, that program is managed by the state police. So you have a state trooper coming into your shop once a month, once a quarter, whatever that frequency is. I don't remember. And they're checking your inspection booklet. They're checking your inspection lane, mm-hmm. making sure things are happening the way they're supposed to happen. The other thing that they do is you get a car that got pulled over and you gave your buddy an inspection sticker on a car that didn't pass, your license is attached to that number. And that's not just your inspector's license. That is your driver's license. The inspection, the license is on the shop or on the technician? The tech, the shop is licensed to have mm-hmm. an inspection lane, but then each inspector is a certified inspector, certified by the state police, DPS, or, you know, whichever the, the – uh, the the agency or the enforcement agency is and i'll tell you what it's hard to bribe your buddy for a sticker Wait. when you got something wrong because he knows his driver's license is on the line for that but that wasn't too much government in your life was it well that was a good yeah thing. having to have the inspection the first <laughs> no <laughs> no it, it, no it, it wasn't and, and that's a whole nother topic we should be having inspections on 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 cars in the state keep the roads a whole lot safer but let's debate it. We've got open phone 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR, open lines. If you want to ha- talk about inspections, licensing, ripoffs, uh, what else? Do Anything you, related to auto repair, let's talk about it. You want to talk about body shops and insurance companies, we can talk about that as well. We've got Dose and Barry when we come back, 602-277-5827. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Dave Riccio from Tri-City Transmission, and he is Matt Allen for Virginia Auto Service. And we are helping you today with your car. If you've got questions, 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. And we've got a board full of phones as well as a bunch of text. We've got a text on a 2008. 
F-250 with a 7.3 liter diesel. He went from 15 miles per gallon on a regular basis down to 8. And I'll be the first to tell you, I am not a diesel guy. <laughs> no. And that's from Rocky. So, Rocky, if you'll send us an email or even even a text with what part of town you're in, we can get you pointed in the right direction for a diesel specialty shop. We've got a couple of those at bumper to bumper radio. Dot com. Dave, there's another one on here talking about mobile mechanics. What do you guys think about mobile mechanics, and are they safe? Well, I mean, I, I, back before I opened my shop, I was one of those guys kind of working on cars at my house, and I did a good job. But I can tell you as a mobile mechanic. In your, in your opinion? <laughs> that's fact. And that's before <laughs> back before they used to write reviews, right? <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of jobs in my shop. The overwhelming majority, I would not want to have somebody doing at my house or as a technician, I wouldn't want to be doing in a driveway. You've got to deal with fluids and run. i got to go get this part and run back and having the right tools. I don't know how one could haul around all the right tools to do a job. Well, yeah, I could see where it would be super convenient to have someone set up. And, you know, they don't have all the overhead of a regular general repair shop. But at the same time, they don't have all the tools of a regular general repair shop, too. So you got to do a few things different because you're missing those things. And I've never seen – now, if you had one done up right, it was a bigger truck. It had – you know, like I'm picturing like a snap-on truck. It had tools. It had some good inventory. Brake lathe. It, it, it had – it was just substantial. But usually what you see is Cletus – <laughs> driving around in an old U-Haul truck or something that was converted and U-Haul took off the road 45 years ago. Right. Or, you know, some stereotypical hillbilly riding around fix, <laughs> fixing cars. And, I, don't know what, I don't know what Cletus <laughs> looks like, but you got to be careful oh, that it's Jethro. not, it's not a, it's not a fly-by-night guy. I had a guy show up and in, in, uh, pop into town and say, hey, I can rebuild your transmission jacks. Great, man. And I have like five of them, and I paid him 200 bucks a transmission jack in a week later none of them worked yeah, but he was some gone gypsy. he was back phone to, number disconnected yeah he was I mean, back in north duped. carolina or wherever he came from i got Follow. duped big time and they were worse than before he touched them so we're gonna go with uh andrew in phoenix he looks like a shop owner go ahead andrew you're on bumper to bumper radio hey guys how you doing today good hey you know i was listening to you guys talking about uh you know bad repair shops around here in phoenix and how it it, I will tell you, as a shop owner, it does make it difficult for, I consider myself a reputable shop owner, it makes it difficult for us to operate in that we are constantly on the defensive with clients. And it almost makes your job that much harder in that you're having to convince the client, you know, from the ground, you know, it's just a battle up hill almost with some, because of these other shops. Well, I think but, that... I think that's a good point. I mean, auto repair in general is just just hard enough as it can be, you know. But then then you've got that whole other aspect. So you've got mm-hmm. you know employees that t- well, take care of that are you know interesting, and then you've got uh, consumers that no matter what you say, it's a lie in their mind. Andrew, sometimes. why do you think that it's that consumers are of that mindset? Well, a lot of it is they've gotten a bad experience at another shop. Um, number one, hey, look, I paid two grand at this shop. My car's still doing the same thing, you know, and. We get the cars in the shop, we look them over, and, you know, again, I pride myself. My techs have been with me five years or longer. I've groomed them um, to the point to where I trust them, you know, not to uh, to rip off my clients. And um, we get under there, we find work that's they either been done incorrectly or even not at all, you yeah. know? Yeah, exactly. And, you know... Yep. And, and the other thing I do, and this is something other shop owners, I mean, if they want to take into, you remember the old show and tell? Um, I believe in taking a client out to the shop, opening the hood, lifting it up in the air, and pointing to what we're doing. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And that's part, that's part of the relationship thing is having that trust with your customer and uh, being able to walk out. And they know at any time you'll show them. Right. And, and you'll take anybody at, at any time. And it's, sometimes customers, they say, I don't want to go back there because I don't know what I'm going to be looking at anyway. And they don't want to feel stupid. No, don't feel stupid. Absolutely go on a tour. You want to see that the guy you're talking to is diligent and you want to see his processes, how he does things, why he's recommending what he's recommending to you. Learn a little something. Go out in the shop. See what he's got to show you. Andrew also brought up something is that his guys have been with him a while and he knows that they're not going to rip off his customers. Right, because he can't be there every well, single moment. That's the thing with the Fletcher's deal. Ultimately, the mechanic is the one 
that made this recommendation and looked at this car. And, and that's why and, they got to be held liable. That's why the licensing has to be on the mechanic. Right. So, but it's a, again, it's a two two way thing though. If if that's happening over and over again, is there some collusion between the 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 shop manager who probably doesn't have any skin in the game is not an owner and, and the technician are they both working the system because everything they do is based on sales and they have to get sales I just wonder there's so many different things that can drive this animal well there's people working at the counter who are service advisors that have no idea about the car so they got to take whatever the mechanic gives to them and and quite honestly in some of the chains and I work in a chain. They love to hire people that had great people skills but didn't necessarily know anything about the car. So how could they audit the technician to know everything was going good? So we've got uh, David in Tucson, FAA mechanic. So I'll be curious what David has to say. I bet he's certified. Now, David, I, I bet there's – yeah, I bet you're certified. I bet there's all kinds of processes and checks and balances if you're an aircraft mechanic, right? Well, actually, what it comes down to is, yes, you have to, at the very beginning, you have to, first off, you have to be able to document every nut you've touched, every bolt you've turned, every check you've done, and you have to put that down before you even go and start the process to get the license. But once you do get the license, then you have to go off of, there's a mechanic's oath, an FAA or an AMP mechanic. There's two licenses. One is the airframe and one is the power plant, and they're two entirely different licenses, but to be able to get both, you have to be able to, again, show all the documentation, prove to everybody that you can do it, and go and pass the test. And that goes everything from being able to adjust a magneto to being able to tell them how many stages are in a, a turbine engine on a, on a Challenger aircraft or on a, uh, on a 737, and then be able to diagnose what it is that's going on with an igniter. So it's entirely different. But you guys have been making some very, very good points regarding that liability still has to be on the mechanic because that is exactly what it is on an FAA mechanic. That person is the one, the ultimate tool that that person has is his brain, the mm. education, and a pen. Without that, that plane will not be returned to service. And that's the honor and integrity that goes into every mechanic that's out there, which is huge. Yeah, I, I appreciate those comments because <laughs> I've been <clears throat> I've been on this this uh, path lately. Is that I do think that the technician should be licensed uh, to to practice. He's got a license; he can be dinged on, you know. And I, I get it that you know in this particular case, yes, uh, you know Fletcher's was the one that ultimately paid the fine. But where's the mechanic in all this? He just goes and gets another job in another shop, and and no one ever, you know, he they, can just they transferred him. He can be within the system, and he's there. And you know what? We should be able to look up that guy's license, that guy's number. We should be able to know who worked on our car. And I think you know he's got to be responsible for what he does. And that's that's just my that's my soapbox. <laughs> so you are mighty tall today, Dave. <laughs> very <laughs> tall. So other than licensing, let's see if we can help somebody on their car. Let's go with Barry in Peoria on a 2002 Suburban. Go ahead, Barry. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, thanks a lot for taking my call. I've got 1,500 uh, two-wheel drive Suburban. It's got 135,000 miles on it, and it's never been aligned before, but the tires are wearing very unevenly on the front inside edges of each of the tires. So uh, my question is, what do we think is wrong? And second of all, where should I go to get it fixed? Well, Did you say two-wheel drive? It's a two-wheel drive, two-wheel yeah. Two-wheel drive. Yeah, at, you know, at 100,000 miles or even 125 for that matter, we find in, in my shop that the front ends on those Chevy trucks, Suburbans, trucks, whatever it is, they're just worn out. A lot of ball joints, a lot of inner tie rod end failures. Idle arms. Uh, yeah, idle arms, although some of those don't have that, you know, they're rack and pinion type steering, so they they may or may not have an idle arm depending on which system it has upper control arm bushings all the time so really barry i think what you need to do is is find a shop you're in uh in peoria dave's car care is one that comes to mind 51st avenue in peoria or go to bumper to bumper radio.com look on the map and see if there's someone close to you but they're going to start by shaking down what we call shaking down the front end you're going to check the the wheel bearings the the tie rod ends the ball joints, control arms, and just shake down the whole front end, find out what's worn out, those parts that need to be replaced, and then have an alignment done. Both inner edges worn out. What does that thing, towed out? It's kind of like you're not pigeon foot, but you're the opposite. Yeah, towed out. (laughs) Toes in, toes out. (laughs) (laughs) Towed out. Uh, But Or uh, uh, control arm bushings. They're just dragging the inside edge of the tires down the road. You Eat up some tires real quick like that. 
Well, thanks so much for the call, uh, Barry. 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. We're going to go with Brian in Buckeye on a 2012 Honda Civic. Go ahead, Brian. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. Um, I don't actually uh, have, have a repair. I'm going a little different direction here. Stop me anytime I get too far off. Um, I do have a, a Civic, and it's actually a, an SI model, so a little, uh, I wouldn't say sporty, but zippy, at least. And uh, I'm actually looking to, you know, uh, start modifying it soon. Um, you know, just the basic kind of things, like intake, exhaust, uh, maybe a header. Um, I'm also thinking about doing, here's where the question comes in, I'm also thinking about doing a, a Honda a Flash Pro on it. I know those have to be tuned, and I have absolutely zero idea how to do that. I looked into it, and it just seems... So far, you know, above my skill level. Um, do you guys have any suggestions on a, on a shop where I can get that done or uh, where I can get all of my modifications done for that? Yeah, I think so. Dave was pointing at himself. He knows somebody. I don't know a whole lot about this particular programming and flashing and such on that model. Dave? Well, I was going to make a point as far as modifying cars. Be careful what you modify. You know, you can sometimes... I don't know, ruin a car. I see these cars that comes in with all kinds of different bolt-ons on them. And when you get in the car, it just drives like crap. <laughs> so well, you're trying to hot rod your Honda, Dave. I mean, I know. I was thing. thinking about getting a turbo for my Honda because, you know, the element just isn't sexy. <laughs> you know, it would be more of a sleeper if I could, you know, roast the tires from the line. But, uh, you know, there's some modifications that are good and then some that can wreck the car. But there definitely is specific shops that do that kind of work. And I can't think of the one in my mind, but he's actually just down the street from me. And uh, he's got a, you know, he can dyno the thing, especially the all-wheel drive cars. He's got a, you know, deal he can run it, and he tunes them all the time. Um, I'm not sure if Greg at ADS does too much tuning on Civics. He probably does. But if you send me an email at bumper to bumper radio.com on the contact link, I will get you both those names and numbers. And maybe they have some good input as far as what to start with, because I'm not well versed in modifying your Honda. I'm kind of. There's a ton of things you can do to them. I used to know all that stuff, and I've I've gotten out of the modified car stages of my <laughs> life, and I just want to drive them now. Right. Well, when we come back, we've got a couple open lines at 602-277-5827. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Dave Riccio, and I don't really recognize this guy, but his name is Cletus standing next to me. <laughs> He's Cooter, your, not Cletus. Cooter? Cooter. <laughs> I'm Bo Duke, and this here is Cooter, and we're helping you with your car, 602-277-5827. And I'm just looking at some of these texts. I have a 2005 MDX with 147,000 miles. I was getting 20 miles per the gallon, and now I'm only getting 15. What could be going on? I would be suspect he's got a check engine light on that he's been ignoring. What do you think? Well, I was going to go down that road, but, uh, <laughs> you know, here I can see this, Dave. We talk to people not, about not directing the repair and don't go in and tell them. I can just hear, those guys in the radio said, that I want this. <laughs> Do this on my car. Those guys said that. And now get ready for the bad review. <laughs> no. <laughs> on that on that MDX, that's a pretty big, uh, pretty big drop, 25%. Yeah. gone. I would bet that like you said Dave, chances are that big of a, a swing, maybe the check engine light, service engine soon light is on or should be on, maybe the bulb's burnt out. Mm. Uh but it, as a technician, you would go in, interface with the handheld scan tool or we have a laptop that uh, has the Honda and Acura software on it with an interface and we're going to look at at some different items. We're going to look at fuel, fuel trim. Fuel trim. There's a sensor in the uh, in the exhaust, an oxygen sensor. Now they're calling them air fuel ratio sensors. That's reading what's happening. It's 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 a it's a it's measuring everything coming out the tailpipe. It's going to send the info back to the to the computer, and based on that data, the computer's going to say, "Whoa, there's too much fuel. There's not enough fuel. What we're seeing is not right here. Put more fuel in." So that's where we're going to see the computer. That's when we're talking about fuel trim. So we can see what's coming out, and we can see what the computer is telling the car to do. And based on that, we can poke around and, and, and find things. You could have a dirty mass well, airflow sensor. Uh, valves uh, out of adjustment are a big issue on the on the V engines and Hondas and Acura. 147,000 miles. So, yeah. yeah, it's time. That's something else I want to talk about is that old check engine light. 
because I had a lady in my shop. She went to a mechanic, and her light's on. He said, ah, oh, it's just a gas cap. I'll throw a gas cap on. It's not a big deal. You know, it's an evap code. Uh, there's an evap code, it seems like, in one in ten cars we check out, maybe two in ten. Uh, so the problem with the check engine light just being on all the time is it does not discriminate between codes that mean something and codes that don't mean something. And the evap code means you are polluting. So if you don't want to pollute, you want to get it fixed. But you're never going to know when there's a misfire code in your engine. And when you've got a misfire code and you're sending some raw fuel down into the catalytic converter, you're going to cost yourself more money. So don't ignore those check engine lights. Never get behind a check engine light. When they come on, whatever it is, just go ahead and fix it. And, you know, there's a difference, Dave, in be behind, oh, it might just be a gas cap. It's no big deal. That's one thing someone might say, regardless whether it's a gas cap or something else, maybe because they can't fix it. Or Mrs. Whatever or Mr. So-and-so, you have an evap code. I'm going to clear the code, and we're just going to put a gas cap on. It's no big deal. That's two sounded the same, but it's two different conversations. I mean, you know, the second one in my book is, here's what we're going to do. This is probably what it is. This is the easy way out for now. But go ahead and try it and see – if if the light comes back on, uh, it's no big deal. You're not going to die in the car. Yeah, it's, it's not, not going to be on the side of the road. Catch on fire. It's not a breakdown issue. Then you can get it in when it's more convenient. So, you know, there's two different kind of don't worries. Of, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, an evap code is not going to put you on the side of the road. But you know, if you can't afford to fix a check engine light for a problem that's on, just know you got to have the computer scanned on a regular basis to see if anything new is showing up. In the meantime, save up for fixing whatever your evap emissions issue is. So we're going to go with, looks like Jim in Mesa on a 2004 Chevy 2500 diesel pickup. Go ahead, Jim. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yes, I wanted to call because the air conditioner on the uh, truck on the driver's side will all of a sudden turn real hot, and on the passenger side, it'll stay cold. I've stopped at three different places and have three different things from the Freon's bow to a backing line to a blender door. Is, uh, is that got automatic climate control where you're dialing in the actual number of degrees, or is it just blue-red scale? It's just as two separate slides that go up and down for temperature. Uh, and what happens is you'll have the air conditioner on, and all of a sudden we'll be blowing hot air on one side and cold air on the other side. Or you have the heater on the vent and stuff, and all of a sudden it will be very hot on one side and comfortable on the other. Okay. Well, you know, the, the answer is yes to all, all three, all three of, those, of those, those yeah. things. If it were the summertime and you came in, you're telling me, gosh, it's, you know, Matt, it's really cold out of this side, but not so cool out of the other side. I would say, well, yeah, it's a possibility that we do have a, a low on charge issue that will happen. Uh, but, but you could also, ha that's the next question. When in the summertime, there's sometimes a difference uh, in finding out, Dave, whether you have hot air, which the air outside is hot, or whether you have superheated air. If you have heated hot air coming out of the out of the air conditioning vents, that's not a charge issue. It's a blend door. That's issue. a blend door, or as he said, a blender door issue. That's where we're going to direct the air, whether we want hot air or cold air, whether we want it on our feet, whether we want it out the dash vents. So it sounds to me like you probably have a control issue. Yeah, control issue going on for sure. Well, we also got a text. Uh Let's see. All right. Maybe we don't. I misread it. I was. <laughs> Which one were you looking at? I, I do know that if you want your bacons and potatoes on the side, that you definitely texted to the wrong phone number. So if by chance you're out there listening and you just put in an order for potatoes and bacon on the side, it's not going to happen unless you text to the to the to the right guy. So, Dave, what do you think? Dan and Chandler with the Volkswagen? Go ahead, Dan, quickly. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. I was just wondering about your guys' opinions on bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranties, if it's even worth it, since you guys work on these cars. Bumper-to-bumper like, bumper warranties. Worth it if I find, like, the, the extra warranties that they have, you know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah, you bet. Uh, there, there's a couple right answers to that one, too, right, Dave? It really depends on who's selling the warranty. There's a lot of warranties that 
that they say bumper to bumper, but then they don't cover like on the transmission business. Oh, we don't cover seals or, oh, we don't cover clutches, but we cover hard parts or whatever it may be. There's a lot of fine print in those warranties. So you got to stick with a good, reputable warranty if you're going to do it, do a warranty. I'm not a big fan necessarily, but uh, there is some good ones out there. Well, and, and I, I've seen a lot of those pay a lot of bills and, and, and it's insurance, so you just don't know. You don't know if you're going to have the opportunity to use it and recoup your money. It's a safety net on one hand. Uh, you I, know, it, it's what, what I what I hate to see happen is I hate to see people get stung by these warranties where they have a transmission issue, big repair. They're in our shop and they find out it's not covered for one reason or another. You always got to stick with your maintenance. Make sure all your maintenance is done if you do one of those warranties, because that's the first thing they look for when there's a big repair. Well, let's see your maintenance records. They're looking, they're looking for an out. That's that's for sure. So thanks for joining us. If you're looking for a great shop, bumper to bumperradio.com. I can guarantee you all those shops are privately owned, and you can talk to the owner if you need to. Thanks, Peter, for running the dials. I'm going to remind you never to text and drive. And next week, we're going to clarify what should be on your auto repair invoice so that you can have a good relationship with your shop. He's Matt Allen, and I am Dave Riccio, and we'll see you next week at Bumper to Bumper Radio.